What do you eat on one meal a day? How do you make it safe and comfortable and still get all the benefits? Coming right up. So what is OMAD or one meal a day? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. You just eat one meal a day. You shrink your feeding window down to about one hour. You eat all the food within that window and you don't eat the rest of the day. So along with the ketogenic diet, which is incredibly popular, there's also talk about intermittent fasting and OMAD, one meal a day. And they're all just variations of the same thing. It's all about cutting back the carbs, reducing insulin resistance. So what drives insulin resistance is the amount of carbs that you eat and how often you eat. Every time you eat a carb, you drive insulin. And the more often you eat, the more often you stimulate insulin. So the reverse of that is to cut back the carbs and eat more seldom, eat fewer times a day. And the extreme version of that, if you want to call it that, is you just eat once a day. So why would you do that? Well, it is a very powerful way of reversing insulin resistance. But another benefit is it saves time. You don't have to spend so much time eating and preparing meals. And another benefit is that you give your body a break. Every time that you eat, you have to kind of jumpstart. You have to start up your, your digestive machinery. You have to make enzymes. You have to move things around. You have to make churn the food. And, and it has a certain wear and tear on your intestinal lining. So if you keep eating, every few hours, then the stomach and the lining never really gets a break. Whereas if you eat one time a day, then it gives the body a lot of time to get some rest and repair. And that goes for all your internal organs, your liver, your gallbladder, your pancreas, your digestive tract, etc. And the next question then is, how do you do this? And how do you do it comfortably? And how do you do it safely? So first of all, I would recommend that you get fat adapted first. That means you get into a keto lifestyle, you start reducing your carbohydrates so that your body knows how to use the fat. That would be step one because now you're more prepared for the one meal a day. Then you start shrinking the window. As you get more fat adapted and you don't get so hungry and you notice you could skip breakfast, you could skip a meal here and there without going crazy. Now you shrink your feeding window. First you eat it at 8 in the morning, you have your last meal at 8 p.m., then you have a 12 hour feeding window, then you shrink that, you skip breakfast, you eat at noon and then maybe at 8 p.m. you have an 8 hour feeding window and then you gradually shrink that down to maybe 6 hours and 4 until you're comfortable eating within a four hour window, meaning you eat maybe at three o'clock in the afternoon and seven o'clock and nothing outside of that window. And now your body is pretty much ready to go to one meal a day where you eat all of the food within a one hour window. So when you do it this way, it's not a shock to the body. You get fat adapted, you get your body used to the concept of eating in a shorter period of time. Then we want to think about a few additional things to make it healthy as well. So you don't want to crash your metabolism. You don't want to get into starvation. And the, the risk of this is much, much less if you're fat adapted first. If, you, if you're not and you start starving, your body goes into a crisis mode and it starts preserving energy. That's not the idea. You want to keep your body burning the fat off your body. But part of that is also don't cut your calories too much. Try to keep it maybe at 70-80%. So if you're eating 2000 calories on a normal basis, that's your basic energy requirements, you probably don't want to cut it below 15, 1600 calories a day. The, the object is not to go hungry. The object is just to give your body a rest and reduce insulin resistance and to burn fat. So it makes it a whole lot harder to get all that quality food in, to get all those nutrients into a single meal because that could be a really large meal and you may not even be able to eat that much. 
So you want to look at quality foods. You want to eat things like maybe an omelette with lots of vegetables in it and then the eggs are nutrient dense. You add some good olive oil and you add some cheese, some raw organic cheese if you can tolerate that. And now you could probably eat 12, 14, 1500 calories in a single meal and, and be okay with that. Another trick would be to make you some bulletproof coffee because even though that wouldn't strictly stick within the one hour feeding window, you could do that in the morning maybe and you just sip it throughout the day and if you do a bulletproof coffee with some butter and some MCT oil in it, it's not going to have a significant influence on insulin. It's not going to trigger any insulin response to speak of and therefore you're still technically fasting. So there you could get, if you use a tablespoon of butter and a couple of tablespoons of MCT oil, now you got 400 calories there sort of for free. That you, if you get the 400 in the coffee, now you just have to eat maybe 1200 in your, in your big meal. So it's not strictly a one meal a day, but it's a way that you essentially stick to the principles of doing that. And again, you want to think quality food. Don't use anything artificial, synthetic, processed, nothing like that. Be the best quality food you can think of. Organic, grass-fed, raw, whole vegetables, all that good stuff. As far as a percentage, this isn't exact for everybody, but a typical percentage of calories would be from 75% from fat, 20% from protein, and probably no more than 5% from carbohydrates. Again, you can maybe get away with a little bit more protein uh, and maybe even carbs. Because you're spreading out the feeding window, you're, you're increasing your fasting period, you're going to still keep the insulin really, really low even if you increase the protein. But if you can still keep this really low then you're, you're better off. So is it safe and is it necessary? So I think that it depends on what your goal is and I don't think that you necessarily want to do it forever because it does limit your food choices a little bit when you have to eat it all in one meal. It is difficult for a lot of people to eat that large a meal. So if your goal is weight loss, then I would say go ahead and do it for a few months and just see how it works. Gauge your results and then you cycle in some regular keto and intermittent fasting. And I would say try to stick for the most part with 80% from fat, 15% from protein and no more than 5% from carbohydrates. Depending on the person, some people can get away with a little bit more carbs, but again, this is individual. I think the top level for most people would be maybe 10% from carbohydrate, which on a 2000 calorie diet would be about 50 grams. If you're still in ketosis at that level, then I think that'd be the top level. Uh, if you're not, then figure out where that limit is for you. Now, if you've lost the weight, if you're feeling good, if you uh, are stable in your health situation and you're just maintaining, now is where you try to tweak it just to figure out where do you feel the best. So now I could still suggest a one meal a day once in a while because there's some great benefits to giving your intestinal tract a rest once in a while. Uh, but it also kicks in something called autophagy. And that's where your body increases its recycling properties. It cleans up junk proteins and old debris from, from cells that break. And you essentially recycle better during autophagy and you kick in autophagy at a much higher level if you have a 23-24 hour fast. But if you don't need to lose the weight, then I would suggest you mostly stick with a low carb diet of with intermittent fasting of a feeding window of 6 to 12 hours. For the most part that's basically what I do. I usually eat within a 6 to 8 hour window. Occasionally I'll have 
some breakfast and then I might have a 12-hour feeding window, but that's not for the most part. Again, I don't have insulin resistance, so weight loss is not a goal. I'm just trying to find out where do I function the best. So for some people at this point, you might want to experiment and see where do you feel the best. I still don't think that you should go into grains or any inflammatory starches, but if you want to, you could try getting up maybe as high as 15% on the carbs. Uh, that's still a relatively low carb diet. And if you're physically active, I think that you could get away with that. Some people might function a little better at that, but figure out where that number is for you. So 15% of carbs for me would be about 75 grams. Uh, I'd probably a good bit lower. That would be my, my highest number uh, on any given day. For the most part, you want to stay probably somewhere in the range of between 5 and 15% of carbohydrate calories. So keep in mind that you want to learn some principles. There's not a one-size-fits-all for everybody. But once you understand the underlying principles, now you can start playing around with it and see what does it take for you to lose the weight you need to get off and what does it take for you to maintain and to feel the best that you can. Please share this video with as many people as you can because we want to help lots of people out there get healthy and understand the underlying principles rather than just little things to do. That's how you make it sustainable and that's how you get the most out of it. Please share your comments. If you want to give this a try, let me know how it goes. And as always, thanks for watching.